Before we start this video, a large thank you to Saul, Brian, Maze, Atticus, Thomas, Espit, and Luke for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Good day, everybody. Today we're going to sync our damage effects and a couple of other things as well. So let's begin by going to the melee damage collider. And again, this works identically for the range projectile and spell damage collider. But if you want to see me do that again, I can. But again, it would just be taking up more time for videos. So if you want to see me do all of them, uh, let me know below. It is the exact same process as I'm about to do now. So I'm just going to fix uh, this error I had before. I'm not actually using final damage, so I'm going to delete that. don't know why it was there. I'm just going to fast forward real quick. Um, I'm just basically going to add in the final fire damage and final physical damage because the final damage variable isn't ever being used. That was a mistake on my end. Uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, just going to copy the final fire damage variable here and do the exact same thing. There we go. I'm done. Now, right below here at the bottom where we actually create our take damage effect, we're going to comment out this code where we actually make the character process the effect. Instead, we're going to say if the character causing damage is the owner, and I see we don't have a variable for that, so let's go make sure we have it. Yeah, so it's just called character manager. On the damage clutter base class, let's rename this to character causing damage, so it's very clear what this is. And at any point, if we have a uh, character that's being damaged, let's rename them from enemy to damage target because sometimes you will be able to have friendly fire. They're not necessarily an enemy. So I'm going to say if character causing damage is the owner, we want to make sure we're always processing damage from the owner's side. Um, you can do this the other way if you want where you're not checking for the owner, but I always like to process it from one side only. So we're going to go over here now on the on trigger, enter on the damage clutter and change this to damage target instead of enemy. And then we're going to simply say uh, damage target. And I think we need to rename it here too. Yes, we do. What do we have it called here? We have it called Enemy Manager. Let's uncomment that out, rename it to Damage Target so it's very clear. And then I'm going to recomment that out. So we're just essentially going to send a server RPC to the person who's been damaged. And we're going to pass all of the variables that we would normally put in our take damage effect. So we'll say Damage Target dot Character Network Manager dot. And then we can say something like Notify Server of Character Damage Server RPC. And obviously this doesn't exist yet, so we're gonna go ahead and make it. So what are we doing? Well, we're essentially just literally going to send some data across the network, uh, everything we need from the take damage effects. So we got physical damage, fire damage, poise damage, the contact point we don't need to send the angle hit from because that just decides the animation we play. And as you know, we've already synced the animations. So basically when the host picks their animation, that'll play for us as well. So over here on the character network manager, let's start by making a comment saying effects. And then I'm gonna put the first one here for public virtual void notify server of character damage server RPC. Okay, so let's go down here now and actually add our server RPC tag above this function or else it's not gonna work. But then we're also gonna say require ownership is equal to false. Now, why are we doing this? Well, basically this allows one client to call a server RPC on another client's object which is perfect for the situation. The situation being uh, we're notifying the server that an object or character in the scene has been damaged. So if I damage you, I'm telling the server, hey, I damaged you. So from this character's object, run the take damage uh, character effect. So let's add some variables to this. We're going to need an oolong variable for the damaged client ID, or rather we can say the damaged character ID because uh, AI do not have client IDs. So we're going to use a very neutral version of this, basically a network object ID. And then we're gonna have a float physical damage, float fire damage. Uh, we're also gonna need the poise damage, the contact, well, we don't need the contact point as just said, and the, uh, or sorry, the angle hit from, we need the contact point. Uh, so let's add that as well. We're gonna have a poise damage, that'll be a float. And now since the contact point is a vector three and we can't send a vector three, uh, what we're gonna do instead is just basically send three floats because that's all a vector three is made of. So we're going to have a contact point X, a contact point Y, and a contact point Z. And if you don't remember, this is for syncing the blood particle effects. If you want them to play in the position that they're supposed to across the network, I think it's important. So I'm gonna put these in. And then lastly, an oolong for the character causing damage ID. And again, since we're using AI in the future as well, we're gonna use an object ID instead of a client ID. So that way this can be used for the AI as well for damaging and taking damage. So we're gonna say, if this is the server that is processing this request, then we're going to run a client RPC. So this runs across every single client that is connected. That way you see the blood splatter effects, et cetera, et cetera. And the noises all sync across. So we're gonna say process damage for 
character across all clients. Then we're going to say client RPC because we have to end with that keyword or it'll give us grief. Uh, and then we can copy all these variables here and paste them inside here as well. Let's open up some curly brackets and then inside we can just basically call our last function. Let's actually call this one first in is server. And then we're going to also make sure we carefully type in all these variables correctly. So it would be damage character ID, physical damage, fire damage, poise damage, contact point X, Y, Z, and then character causing damage. So basically, yeah, the RPC uh, gets ran. And if it is a server running it, and then it proceeds to run a client RPC, which will again run across every connected client. And that will just basically play that cool damage effect for every client, which is like the blood splattering and the sound effect, et cetera, et cetera. But the only person who will actually edit their health pool is the owner when this effect is ran on the owner. So lastly, let's make a private void perform character damage from server, or you can honestly just call it uh, perform or process character damage is fine too. And then we're going to need to put in all of our variables one last time. And basically then we can actually create the effect here and start actually processing it from this final function. So what do we need here? Well, we can copy a lot of what we need from the uh, melee weapon damage collider. Let's just copy the entirety of the take uh, damage effect. And then let's come back over here and paste in here. And again, we don't need the angle hit from because that's just only there to determine the damage animation. But because we already have a server RPC for the play specific target animation, we don't need to process that. So uh, let's just put the physical damage, the fire damage, the poise damage, and the contact point will be a new vector three using contact point X, Y, and Z. And that should be fine. And we can just erase angle hit from. Now, we're going to need to get the damaged character and the character causing damage. But like I said, we can't use their client ID because what happens if this is an AI? An AI does not have a client ID. They have specifically every network object in the game has a network object ID. So we're going to use that instead. And we're going to get it from a list of network objects, which the network manager always stores. So we're going to say take damage effect dot character causing damage is equal to network manager dot singleton dot spawn manager dot spawn objects. We're going to pass our damage character ID. Then we're going to say dot game object dot get component character manager. Now, remember, you have to make sure that your character manager is on the same game object as the uh, network object, or else you won't be able to get it this way. But if you have a setup like me, then it will be and you won't have a problem. Next, we're going to say character manager damage target is equal to the same thing. We do the exact same thing here by saying network manager dot singleton dot spawn manager dot spawn objects. But instead, we pass our damaged character ID dot game object dot get component character manager. Now, what you should do here is make one last check to see if the damage target is invulnerable. And the reason why you should do this is because sometimes if there's lag, you could get hit. But on your end, you're invulnerable, but on the enemy's end, they're not. So what you want to do is check to see if the damage target dot is invulnerable return and don't run this logic. Uh, because like I said, a lot of times if you have network lag, I'm just gonna make a comment here. Let's say I attack you and on my end, you're not dodging, but on your end, you've just started to dodge. So you are invulnerable. We don't want to damage you because that will be frustrating on your end when you've clearly dodged. So if we're not invulnerable, we're going to change that to a network variable in the future, most likely. But since this is ran locally, it's fine right now as it is. Uh, we're going to say damage target dot character effects manager dot process effect instantly. And then we're going to pass the take damage effect. And that is mostly it here. So what do we do now? Well, we're going to have to call this process character damage here in the client RPC, pass all of our variables again. And then we got to go back to the actual point where the damage is being generated at the melee damage collider and pass all of the proper variables over there as well. So let's do that. Let's save this and then let's jump over into the oh, project here and on this arrow will bring us right over here. So we just say take damage effects dot physical damage. Actually, sorry, no, we don't. That's not the first variable. What is the first variable? Let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, so the damage client ID. So we'd say right here, the damage target dot network object ID. That's it. And then the physical damage, the fire, the poise, the contact points X, Y, and Z, and then the character causing damage would again be the character causing damage dot network object ID. So the way this is set up, basically on your end, when you damage somebody, you're going to send them a notification of damage. And then on their end, it's going to attempt to process. But on their end, if they are invulnerable, it's not going to process. 
uh, and it will be fine. But if they are not invulnerable, then they will take damage. And regardless, then they will play an animation. And since we've already synced our animations with a server RPC, that animation will play for every other connected client, which is why we don't have to pass the angle hit from, because again, uh, that's only used to determine the animation. And everything will be fine. So let's fill this in and let's then save that and we can jump into the game and test it but i have a sneaking suspicion we're going to have to sync two more variables that i know of so i'm in the game here now and i'm going to get this gentleman to try to hit me and you can see here as we even swing the sword we get an error now what is this let's open this up in unity and see so yeah it is a sound error this is because we're like we don't know if we're using the right or left hand because they're not network variables so although on my end it says i'm using the right hand when i swing you can see here on the connected clients and if i click his little name here uh, if I go to player manager, it does not say he is using the right hand. Yes, no, it does not. So how do we fix this? Well, we make it a network variable. So when it changes on my end, it changes on everybody's end. So basically everywhere you see is right hand and left hand. Delete that from the player or rather the character manager. Just delete it and then go to the character network manager. And under flags, let's make this a flag instead. And since it is a network variable, when the owner changes this flag, it will change for everybody and then we will no longer have an error for looking for a sound effect because we will be using um, our right hand because it will be synced across the network. So do the same thing with the left hand here. And now basically this is just going to be a lot of going through every time we've called using left or right hand and syncing it. So let's, let's start um, right here for update, which hand character is using only the owner should ever be able to update this. Okay. So let's say if is owner, let's put this inside here. And then we're going to say, instead of just is using left or right hand, we will be saying uh, character network manager dot is using right hand dot value is equal to true. You want to make sure you're saying dot value or else you're going to get some grief. You will not be able to uh, change it that way. So make sure you're saying dot value. And then do the same thing with dot left hand. And it is the same throughout. Now, we're going to be mostly changing checks and not sets. So you won't need to check if you're the owner. If you're just checking it, it's only if you're setting it. Uh, so we're good to go there. And now let's just save this and move on to the next. So again, to be clear, since this is now a network variable, if the owner changes it, it will be changed for everybody else uh, who sees the owner's game object, which is very handy. So over here on the AI, you don't need to check for owner because in the future, we're going to make it so only the server, basically the owner of the AI is going to be calling these run functions because we're basically just syncing the position and the animation uh, across the network. So for now, you don't need to check if it's the owner, if it's on the AI scripts, because only the server will be running the functionality of processing the AI's brain. And over here, you can see here, we're just checking. So we don't need to check for an owner here because we're just seeing it. We want to read it. If you want to read it, you're allowed to read it as a non-owner. Totally fine. Let's save. And it's going to be the same throughout. So I won't continue to repeat myself, but I will keep it on the screen because I know a lot of people told me they prefer when I do every little thing here on screen in the soul series, as opposed to just checking all these errors and fixing them off screen. So if you want to fast forward, you can, but if not, if you want to see exactly where I'm going, then you can keep watching. We have 29 more to go. Next one's in the animator. Since this is trying to set the network variable, we need to check if we are the owner. So let's just do that real quick. If character dot is owner and put any network flags in here right now, it's only is using left and right hand in the future. We're definitely gonna have some more. And I know a lot of you, if you are totally used to netcode, you're seeing this and a lot of you are probably saying, duh, and that's cool. That's great. I encourage you to totally skip on ahead. Um, if a lot of you are just getting into netcode and this is your first time and this is your first series using it, I would strongly suggest taking a peep at the Elden Ring series if you haven't, because since we start with netcode from the very beginning, it's so much easier to digest. Right now, we're kind of taking a whole project and just trying to, we're refactoring all these portions. And it makes sense as somebody who's very familiar with netcode, uh, but if you're not familiar with netcode, then this is probably going to be overwhelming or confusing for you. And that would be totally normal if it was. So if that is how you feel, don't stress yourself out. I would really suggest taking a peep at the Elden Ring series because I really dig into that and describe every little thing uh, in a way that it makes a lot more sense because you're seeing it being built from the ground up as opposed to it being built one way and then totally overhauled from the inside out. Because all of these things, uh, if you are new to netcode, you're probably not familiar as to why I am doing things the way that I am. But if you are familiar with netcode, then I'm sure a lot of this already makes sense and you don't need to go take a look at that at all. I'm sure if a lot of you are familiar with netcode, you've probably already gone ahead and done a lot of these things yourself. 
you might just be peeping the video to see how I'm doing it to check it or whatever. I get that a lot too from a lot of you. So yeah, I'm not reading out what I'm doing right now because it is just a lot of the same. Um, it's just the same as it has been, but I will keep the video up here on screen. We're almost done though. So when we are done, then we're going to basically run into the scene here and do a check to make sure this works. And then we're going to make sure we can actually process our damage. So again, as you can see here, this is just a check. I'm not checking for the owner. Why are we doing this? Uh, we're basically doing this now because we need to check if we're using the left or right hand in a lot of circumstances in our combat. It's mostly for effects and things like sounds. As before, you saw that basically in order to play a sound effect, we're checking if we're using the left or right hand. And we're checking that because we need to check which weapon specifically we're trying to draw sound effects from the whooshing sound effects in particular. So this is why we're doing this. It also plays into a lot more systems uh, besides that too, but that is the main one right now that we got an error from. We're probably correcting a few other things by doing this that I'm not quite thinking of right now. So just going to keep on correcting these and we're almost done. I think we just have like a dozen left, nine left. Okay, cool. So this is some old code. This is the healing spell. This is definitely going to need some adjustments, I'm sure, because we're trying to add health. So we need to check for an owner there if we do that. Uh, here we go. This is the handle heavy weapon combo. So yeah, these are all just in the attack actions. This should be fine afterwards. I don't think these will need any adjustment whatsoever because these are mostly handled from the owner's point of view. Yeah, this is a projectile spell. This one will probably need revisiting just because we need to sync the location uh, of the spell based on the owner and where they're facing and how they're throwing it. This is definitely going to need to be revisited. We can do this like three or four different ways. So I'll show you guys uh, half a dozen different ways to handle that, depending on which one you like the most. Uh, handle light weapon combo, this is fine. All the character actions. So basically everything that's melee should be fine. The thing we'll need to actually revisit uh, after this will be ranged combat and um, anything that spawns a projectile, really some magic as well. And this looks good. Let's save that. Okay, we're almost through this now. I think that was the last one actually. Yes, it was. Okay, so now if I go into the game and I swing, uh, you can see we have a team ID number first too. So if I were to attack, this won't work. So I'm gonna change my team ID number on both ends to something different. And now if I go up here and I swing, you can see I definitely take the damage, but you'll notice my stamina bar went down when they swung uh, and my health bar didn't change. So you can see here though, I did take damage. I'm at 73 instead of 100. So why did that happen? Well, basically we're never checking if we're the owner for our UI because we made it before we had multiplayers. So if there's another player object in the scene and they take a swing, they can actually basically desync our stamina bar. And since they're at full health, the same thing can also happen with the health bar if it links to their character instead of ours, which it did. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to make sure that our UI is only getting assigned to the owner, uh, basically the local player. And we're going to do that in the next video. Before I go, though, I need to ask you guys a question about what you'd rather see. So I recently covered uh, saving and loading in Elden Ring with 10 character slots. Would you guys rather see me go over the UI sync and a few more network syncs? Basically, would you like me to keep hitting the network stuff? Or would you like me to, before I do that, go and make a full on like 10 character slot save and load system? I'm talking the full thing, not just like me showing you how a save and load system works. I'm talking being able to create a new game from the menu, start off into the world or load pre and load previous games uh, from the menu as well. So it would be 100% complete in its entirety. Uh, if you want, you can just go check it out in the Elden Ring series and do it that way. But if you'd rather me cover it here in this series, I can as well. Please let me know. Uh, like I said, if you'd rather me just move along with the network stuff, also let me know. I will go in whatever direction you guys prefer. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. I know I sound like a broken record, but if you want to leave a like and a comment on this video, it does genuinely help out my series so much. And a special thank you to my patrons. It is because of you lovely people. I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. Have a great week. I will see you in the next episode.